In this CAD for Newbies tutorial, I'm going to talk about how I use the Revolve feature in Fusion 360 to create this um, uh, hubcap. Yeah, let's go, let's go with that. Let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse and welcome back to another CAD for Newbies tutorial using Fusion 360. Now I do apologize for the Prusa behind me printing, but I do need to multitask. Got a hustle, so let's get into it. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use the Revolve feature in Fusion 360. So Revolve is a very powerful feature, and in my opinion, underused, because some people just struggle to understand precisely how it works. It's easier often for most people to do multiple extrudes rather than a single Revolve, but Revolves are very powerful because you can create extremely complicated spherical or um, rotated objects with just one sketch. And this is a uh, hubcap that I created using multiple revolves doing various things, either adding or subtracting material and then patterning to create the shape. But let's just open up a blank sketch, a uh, blank project to discuss what revolves actually are. So to do so, I'm going to hit sketch and create a sketch on the, the uh, ZX uh, front plane. So I'm gonna just go to create a line. You could hit L as well on the keyboard. And I'm going to draw a line up here, vertically, and escape. So Revolve takes a sketch and revolves it around an axis. So you need an axis to create a Revolve. You don't have to put the axis in the sketch. You can use an axis from some other part of your project, but it has to be there for it to be revolved around. And as a very, clear, a very easy, quick example, I'm just going to uh, go to sketch, and I'm going to go down to arc, here we go, arc, select the center of my line, up here, oh that wasn't the center, it doesn't matter, down here, there you go. Just gonna hit D to give it a dimension and a height, so let's go with, uh, let's go with 60. And, okay, that bottom one's not constrained. Uh, if you missed my video on constraints, you definitely need to go watch that, because I'm not gonna really explain constraints in this video. Right click, coincident. So we have a sketch here that looks, it's a hemisphere, and this is a very simple, the most basic uh, revolve you could do. So I'm gonna hit stop sketch and create revolve. So a revolve needs a profile and an axis. So profile, uh, sketch, and axis, the one we drew, select. And what the revolve does is takes that sketch and whips it around to create a solid object. It revolves it to create a solid object, just like that. So you can create a sphere very, very easily using revolves. There is different types of revolves. So you, th this is, um, actually that's, uh, let's go back to this. So this is on full. So a full revolve is just all the way around 360 degrees. Also, if you have angle set to 360 degrees, it's the same thing. But under the angle type, you can actually set it to a different number. Like let's go with 60 degrees you just get a 60 degree slice of your object. Similarly, you can also do something called two, which I did explain in the extrude video. If you haven't seen that, don't go check it out. And that will actually bring it around to another object, which is very powerful, but a little bit advanced. So I'm not gonna go into it in this simple demonstration. So I'm gonna cancel that. And I'm gonna right click down the bottom and edit my sketch. You might be thinking, all right, Angus, great. You made a sphere, great. I can do that with a primitive. Yes, you can. But let me quickly show you the extreme power of revolves. I'm gonna hit C for circle, and I'm just gonna dot some circles in this shape like that. Don't care about dimensioning them. I'm not interested in that at all. Stop sketch. And I'm gonna do create revolve again. This time, I'm only gonna select this part as our profile. I'm not selecting where the circles interact with the other circle. And axis, again, select our main one. Have a look at that. That's a very complicated object created with just one revolve. And that's only because the profile we had removed those circles and then it swept it around 360 degrees. But I'm gonna go even further than that. So I'm just gonna click, select sketch again. And I'm gonna select our, where's our front plane? There it is, front plane again. And this time, I'm just gonna draw some random shapes here. Let's, uh, let's draw a little circle here. Again, I have a whole video on dimensioning if you wanna check that out, but I'm gonna go into dimensioning here. 
So with a revolve, you might be thinking, okay, it needs to be around that axis. Well, no, you can actually have an axis that isn't part of the geometry. So I can hit line, L, draw a line there. I still want the center, to, to, center of the object to be the axis, but I can hit X. And X turns it into a construction line. So becoming a construction line means it's not part of the final geometry. It's just helping to construct it. So stop sketch and create revolve profile these circles and axis that one now by default fusion 360 has decided that i'm probably wanting to do a cut revolve a revolve cut but actually i want to do a revolve join um just to show you what it would look like so these big donuts come around but that's instead of doing um doing the sort of full 360 let's let's do an angle of let's say 60 degrees or maybe even less than that let's go the 30 degrees, 30 degrees like that. Alrighty. So you have these little objects now that are revolves, but only to a certain amount. And as you would have seen in my UFO example at the start of this video, you can then create patterns. So patterns can actually be based around an axis as well. It's called a rotational pattern. So create pattern, circular pattern, well, circular rotational, depending on what CAD software you're used to. Circular pattern is in Fusion 360, that's what they're calling it. Pattern type, we want features, and we're gonna use the revolve we just created, select it down the bottom left, and axis. So, we can either use the sketch axis that we have uh, here, we can just select that, or you can actually draw an axis, uh, axis using a construction axis, like a construction plane. I'm not going to go into that here, I'm just going to use the original sketch. There's no reason you don't, you shouldn't do that. Like that. Just by um, unhiding it. And it's got three, I'm just going to make it five, so it's a bit more interesting. And then, okay. <laughs> and we end up with this wacky, wacky looking shape. So, limitations of revolves. You have to revolve. You cannot do anything beyond a rotational objects so it's great for hubcaps or it's great for spinning tops or it's great for any sort of like uh, vase vase that's completely uh, circular um, you can do that but you can't do something that's going to be like an egg shape where it's going to sort of extend out you could do an egg sure very easily but something that sort of extends out like this extending out to a side it's not going to work you need another feature which is called a sweep which I'll be going into in a, in, in a future video. But I'm just gonna close this and show you how I created my UFO. So I'm gonna go all the way back to the start of the creation here, showing you the sketch. So this was the start of my UFO. I just drew these random sort of shapes as if you had a cross section of your of the ship. Uh, oh, sorry, it's a hubcap, isn't it? Whatever. <laughs> it's a, so this, this is a cross section. And it's really important to note that you don't see it on the other side because you only need one half and you don't want the... You, the Fusion can't create a revolve with something that's on both sides because it's going to intersect with itself. That's a very common uh, mistake when you first start to learn to use rotational uh, revolves because if you have something on this side, it's going to come around and intersect it. Unless you're only doing a partial revolve, which can work, but for... Uh, for your own sanity, only make sure that you only use geometry on one side of your axis. So I just created these random shapes and then I created my revolve here. So right clicking it, edit feature, I just selected the profiles that I wanted. Like this, Fusion really doesn't care if it's, you know, intersecting closed profiles. It just needs to be able to select an area. So I could have it, you know, that. But you notice, um, as soon as I click this, it's throwing up an error and it's saying this. The profile crosses the revolve axis. Try moving the profile or trimming it along the axis so there's no overlap. So that's exactly what I was saying. It doesn't let you do that. So I can just deselect that and everything's fine again. So I just had this basic shape there. And then I created another sketch. But this sketch is a little bit different. So here's, here's my sort of revolve. But this one's a little bit different. Instead of doing a revolve that builds up material, I wanted to do a revolve cut which actually would cut away a little dimple here. But I didn't want to create a cutaway track along the entire shape, so instead I just did a right click here. I did a 30 degree angle from the symmetric di direction. I could do one side if I wanted to, but I did via symmetry, 30 degrees both sides, 
like that. That created this nice little cutout here. And before I mentioned you can do a construction axis, well, that's what it is here. So under construct, you have all these different construction geometries and an axis is very, very easy to create just by selecting any of these revolve details and that can make it a bit easier to create future revolve geometry instead of going back to the original sketch. Whatever works for you, both is completely legitimate. So next was a, another sketch and this one, if I right click it, the purpose of this sketch was to create these little, little sort of underside bumps. So I'm not, 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 not going to revolve the entire sphere, I'm just doing the underside bumps and again it's not going to let you revolve, that's my axis, you know, here. It's not going to let you revolve both sides, you only want to do one. So when I went to do my revolve, edit, I only selected one. Now I can select that one or that one, but it won't let me do both. It only wants one. So that's totally fine. Just one like that. And that created these little bumps on the other side of the shape. And one final detail, which is a little bit complicated, but I'll try to explain it is this sketch here. So what this sketch does is I'm taking away a bit of material from the edge of our saucer, maybe flying saucer, and I'm doing that by doing an intersection. So under sketch, project and include intersect. Intersects are fantastic for cutting through a shape like a revolve, and the intersect creates this pink line, which is the intersection line. I then created an offset, hit O for offset, I selected that pink line. So an offset is a really easy way to cut into a shape uniformly. And I offset it down two millimeters, as you can see with that one there. And then I just uh, basically drew in a line to sort of close off my profile. Stop sketch. And what I did with this is a cut, only a certain amount, a revolve cut. So very similar to the, um, the other one that was on the top surface. It's just a profile here, which was my you know, removed material and the axis was the center axis again and it was a cut. So it leaves this nice looking shape there. And then finally, I did a rotational pattern, a circular pattern, which takes all of those objects and patterns them three times. So the pattern, right click here, edit feature. It's a feature type pattern and I just went down the bottom left and selected the features I wanted to pattern and then did so and it rotated them around three times. Now I intentionally knew, I intentionally thought forward for the three, for the quantity of three, because if it did any more, it's, it's not going to work with the, uh, the angles and, um, sizes I, I chose. Like, you know, look four just actually looks pretty cool to be honest, but I wasn't, it wasn't my intention to do that. I wanted to do three. So three was the intention like that. Um, and then basically I decided to create this little cutout in the top here and I did that again using an intersection curve you can see here and I just cut away material like so and then I used the same sketch to do another revolve but I instead of selecting the revolve to uh, join with the existing material the existing geometry I just selected new body and the reason I did that is it's two pieces I can just hide one in the bodies list like that, like that. And if I was to 3D print that on a machine like the multi-material upgrade Prusa, I could have two different colors. Anyway guys, that's gonna conclude it for this CAD for Newbies tutorial on using revolves. I really do hope you give them a shot because it can be a little intimidating working out what that profile will look like when you revolve it. But don't forget, Fusion will let you go back in time. I can go back to my original sketch, click edit, and I can change the size of things. I can be like, okay, this was a bit too small. I'll make it 15 and then stop sketch and then everything updates. So don't be afraid to use revolves to do some really powerful, almost organic 3D modeling. It's not organic, it's still parametric. Um, you, you're not push pulling, you're actually still being able to go back and edit it, but you can create some really complicated shapes versus, I mean, trying to do this with extrudes Forget about it. There's no way you could design this with extrudes. And if you did find this video useful, guys, please feel free to subscribe to Makers Muse, send us future 3D printing tips, tricks, and uh, videos like this in Fusion 360. And a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, Patreon supporters, who uh, helped me get to the goal of you know being able to create these tutorials. This is my full-time job, and I really do like bringing this sort of content to you guys. So till next time, guys. Look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. 
Deadline Edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell.